Welcome to The Gig, a series about film and TV from behind the screens and on the scene. We are your hosts, Leila T. Rosario. And Jessica Ransom. And today we are interviewing VP Executive Producer at Gray New York Townhouse, Rondell Westcott. Ask Rondell where he's from and he'll tell you he was born in Philly and made in New York City. The made part happened at the Lawrence Herbert School of Communication at Hofstra University, where Rondell learned how to produce for television and film, his life passion. Today, with almost two decades of experience under his belt, he's produced every medium under the sun from radio and print ads to digital content, music videos, and global television campaigns for various brands, including Dr. Scholl's, Chobani, NBC Universal, ExxonMobil, and Gillette. Some of Rondell's accomplishments include winning a silver lion at Cannes, gold, silver, and bronze at one show, gold at the International Andy Awards, two silver Clio Awards, an Effie Award, and a Webby Award. Hello, Rondell. Hey, y'all. What's up, everybody? Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Good to be here with you, ladies. Thank Thank y'all for the invitation. Yes, yes. Can you tell us about your origin story? Hey, ladies. Well, as you said, yes, born and raised in Philly, which I always rep, uh, but made in New York. I came here as a little meek and mild 17-year-old, came to um, college here in New York, and um, where I live now, I live in Brooklyn, but um, started, I always had a love for New York when I was a kid, knew I always wanted to like live here and work here and be here, and was honored and grateful that I was able to go to school here, and then soon after school, having done a couple of uh, internships, which led to my first full-time job, which was at an ad agency. And that was you know, many years ago. And here I am now still working in, in advertising and in film and in TV and doing what I love to do. How did you break into the business after college and your road to becoming the VP at Gray New York Townhouse? Yep, so I started, uh, at, in, I went to Hofstra as I mentioned, and actually I had done four internships while I was at Hofstra. And my last internship happened to be at Gray New York where I am now, um, but it was, I kind of left and came back. But my fourth internship led to my first full-time job at Gray, and they hired me as an assistant producer, uh, 21 years old, fresh out of school, uh, not knowing much about advertising or production. And uh, from there, I learned to love the business, learned advertising, learned all that was going on, and uh, loved everything that was happening. And then I stayed at Gray for about four years, and then I left and went to Havas. Then I went to Leo Burnett, New York, and then came back to Great New York uh, just about four years ago. So it's been a good, long, long journey in advertising so far. Nice. Amazing. Um, so can you basically help uh, educate some of our viewers on the advertising industry? What is the role of an ad producer? Yeah, so in the ad industry for a producer, I'd say my role is... Um, you know, we, we lead the ship, we're curators, we help to find the best talent for the production, whether, whether, whether it be trying to find a comedy director, if it's a comedy spot, or if it's um, whatever the genre might be, if you need food, if you need mom and pop kind of a spot, just finding the best talent to execute the spot, and then working with the talent, always working within a client's budget, and um, pulling all the resources together to make the spot be what it is, from the director, from the casting, to the music, to the voiceover, kind of finding all the pieces and all the parties to kind of come together and then making it all happen within a certain budget and delivering a final project that goes on air and that you're happy to see once it's on air. You can say, hey, that's my commercial. You know, when it, you know, you're watching your favorite show and it comes on and you're proud, that's always a good feeling. Nice, absolutely. What suggestions would you give to someone trying to break into the advertising industry, especially black and brown folks? Yeah, I would say definitely trying to get into the advertising industry. Definitely it would always help if you know someone, uh, you know, because people may have heard or seen that the ad business predominantly is not, uh, there are not many minorities or many black people specifically in the advertising business. So I know there's organizations like Forays and other things that are trying to help bring more multicultural representation to ad industries and ad agencies. Um, But I think it's always good to initially, if you know someone, even from LinkedIn, which is a big, huge resource now that we all, which is how I found out about you all, you know, Mm -hmm. but, you know, from LinkedIn, just kind of going through searching people, 
people typically have a profile picture so you can understand who may look like you, you know, um, and then even doing a cold reach out. I think I found that people are very receptive and very helpful when you reach out to them on LinkedIn and other platforms. They're willing to help you and give you a hand and submit a resume or give you a recommendation or put your name in front of a boss to help get your um, get, help get you into the door. So I'd recommend a LinkedIn search and then doing cold reach outs and being um, consistent to follow up. That's always key, you know, because you may e email somebody once, may not hear back immediately, but just kind of follow up every so often. And eventually they said the uh, squeaky door gets the oil, right? Mm -hmm. So if you kind of keep doing it and being consistent and persistent, it'll pay off. Amazing, Great. thank you. Um, switching gears a bit, have you experienced any racism in advertising? Do you have any examples of any kind of microaggressions? Um, and also, have you seen any creative work done, produced by any agency that you've worked at that you felt was racist? Oh, that's a bold question. <laughs> uh, definitely, I would, <laughs> I would say, to take in the first part of it, I would say I have experienced racism, whether it had been overt or not. Um, example, one time I was doing a casting for a brand, which I won't mention, but we were doing a casting and they wanted a black female to be in the spot. And then the client, who was a white woman, um, said that, yeah, we want a black woman in a commercial, but we want more Holly Berry, less Whoopi Goldberg, you know, and that was the literal word that the client said. And, okay, I mean, I understood, you know, like what she was trying to say. Obviously, Holly Berry is more fair skin and, you know, uh, you know, not like dreadlocks and dark skin like Whoopi Goldberg. So I understood, you know, the sentiment, but it was cruel. It was unfair and, I, and a racist comment, you know, Black people come of a various spectrum, you know? So if you want a black person, I understand that some brands feel that darker skinned black people are not as mainstream, quote unquote. I mean, I've heard that, you know, being said even, which I think is also another uh, comment that can be considered racist, that you want to have black people represented, but you don't want a darker skinned black person to represent your brand. So, and I've heard, you know, I've, I've had that, over the year, even with creatives and doing casting and looking at casting reels and casting tapes. And they're like, yeah, we want a black person, but nah, that one's too threatening. That's too dark. And I'm sitting there like, yo, like we come in the spectrum. If you want us, take us. Don't just take a, a few, a small selection of us. You got to take all of us, you know? So, uh, but then for other brands, I mean, I've seen, I don't know if I would consider it racist for like brands that I've seen, but I know that Brands like to represent less, less threatening what they would call black people. You know, even now on TV, Al Roker talked about it on the Today Show last week, how we're seeing a lot more interracial couples on commercials now. You may see a black man with a white woman or vice versa, a white woman, black man. Um, you know, which I think that brands are thinking that, okay, we can show a black person, but let's give them a white counterpart for a mate. You know, and just trying to like, yeah, we're going to include the black people, but we're going to make it, we're going to soften it up a bit and give them like a, a white spouse or a white partner or whatever in the spots. So, I mean, just I've seen that happening and as more and more and more of a trend now. And um, again, that's their brands, the brands, they can do what they want for their brand, but just being sensitive that again, sorry, being, that knowing that we come in a spectrum of, of colors and an array of colors and we're all beautiful. Right. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, piggybacking off of Jessica's comp, uh, questions, how do you think you can fight racism in this industry? Yep. Uh, no, for us, I mean, racism in this industry, um, it's an uphill battle, right? I think we're all every day trying to do more, trying to get more representation. And I think my role and goal as a Black male in this industry, where it's you know, we're not very dominant at all. And we're not very pervasive in terms of our people being represented. But my goal and role is to help the brand's perception to understand that a darker skinned black person is not threatening. A black woman with natural coily hair, you know, is not a problem because it's not long and straight. You know, you may want that, but you may get great performances and people can relate more. Your consumers can relate more to a spectrum of black people who don't look like what you may think black people look like. So, so for me, for castings, is to kind of help promote 
us to really get that authentic, real, natural looking um, black talent on camera. And also, as you mentioned before, helping others who are not in the industry or may who, who, who are in other industries and want to transition to advertising to be a resource, you know, to help get them in the door, help get them an interview, help get their resume to HR, you know, and I'm open and totally available, you know, for people who may want to reach out to me via LinkedIn or from other kind of uh, other resources, but I'm 100% down to get our people into the door, whether it be for music departments, whether it be producers, directors, to even hire those types of talent. Because as producers, we do have the authority uh, to be able to hire black talent for directors, for actors, you know, we can suggest. And I think now is more of a time to do that because brands want to be amongst the conversation that's happening now in the culture that they want to be, you know, be a part of the, the Black Lives Matter movement and being all for the black culture right now. So this is more of a time than ever to be doing things like that. That is such a powerful answer. And to add to that, I'm going to also share being an executive producer. I'm an executive producer over at Ogilvy. I'm the global executive producer on a big brand. And prior to that, to my producing experience in the past, I've been in uncomfortable and also situations where I've pushed back on clients because they are not diversifying the bidding process mm -hmm. and giving opportunities to our people to be able to even have a chance to be in the bidding phase. So I ask you this, how do we diversify the bidding process? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I mean, as you know, from our roles as producers in advertising, reaching out to our, uh, the sales rep community to get us some director recommends when we're looking for people for various projects. So I think it can be, or I think it is on us to, because we're typically the first gate, you know, some creative teams may know directors that they want to work with, but you know, the producers are the ones who are outsourcing new talent and then bringing in the reels to creative teams and to creative directors. So, you know, I think, you know, it's a, it behooves us, you know, to kind of seek out the black directors, the black DPs, you know, so that we can have them be, have their reels have a chance to be reviewed by our creative team and be reviewed by clients. And mostly it's just the name. The team doesn't have to know that they're black per se, but we know that they're black, you know? And it's like judge based on the talent, not based on the person's, you know, skin color. If it's a great reel, it's a great reel, regardless if they're black or not. So just kind of finding those best, those great reels for the project, getting them to our teams, and then giving our black directors and DPs, you know, a shot at some work in advertising. Thank you. Um, I'm going to get a little bit about my background here now. Um, so I've been about four and a half years. I was on the vendor side of the business as a senior producer. And then I did about two and a half years as an AP at, on the agency side. And I've also done commercial work uh, for some PR agencies. So total, I've been in business about eight years. And from what I've noticed about advertising and commercial specifically is that on the post side, for a fact, like editors, animators, and even post facilities, they are not diverse. Like, that's what we are lacking. And also in the internal post houses facilities of a lot of ad agencies, it's not much diversity. So I guess for me, in what ways on the vendor side, do you think, and also in the internal post facilities, do you think that we can combat this racism or add to diversity? Um, I know you specific ways before on the bidding side, but what do you think about in terms of post-production? Yeah, and I think it's also the same type of process you know, again, the producers, the, the agency producers are the ones who are outsourcing the talent, you know, that we share with creatives and clients for review and approval to work with. So again, it's just on us to do a deeper dive, you know, and when we get, when reps submit reels, you know, let's ask our reps, you know, like if you know people personally, great, but also talking to the reps, like, hey, you know, do you guys have, you know, we're looking for some great reels, but, you know, I would love to get, you know, some black talent represented, you know, for this spot, especially if the content that we're doing the spot is around a black focused content matter, you know, because I'm working on a project right now that's, you know, specifically, specifically for the black market. Mm -hmm. And I'm the only black person amongst a team of probably maybe 15 or so. I'm the only black person, male or female on the team, but we're doing a whole initiative for a black market, you know? So, Again, it's kind of like it's on us. You know, if we don't do it, it won't get done. 
you know, because what, what initiative does someone else have to bring in a new black talent? You know, they maybe, maybe now they may have a more reason to do so because of the movement that's going on. But outside of that, on a general Tuesday, you know, a general day, what uh, motivation do they have to try and get more black talent represented? So it's on us black producers to seek out that talent, do a deeper dive, and then present those reels to our team for consideration. Okay. Great, thank okay. you. What yeah. changes would you like to see from the ad world in the future when it comes to diversity and racism? And what does 2021 and beyond look? What's your utopia for this business? I think for, I, mean, I know I signed in, there was a petition going around this week. You all may have seen it for like black people in advertising specifically. And um, I know I got an email back from the um, guy, was it Bennett D. Bennett? And another guy, I forgot his name, apologies. Um, but you know, they were saying that was, they had started this petition, got thousands of signatures, and now they're gonna be taking that to like the ad board so we can try and increase representation and make it a more mandatory thing and not make it just kind of an off the cuff. Like, hey, oh yeah, we may hire a black person and we may not, you know, but this is gonna kind of help or help to make it more of a mandate that agencies, especially creative teams, are a bit more diverse. Because again, trying to create uh, ads for, um, sorry, trying to create an ad for a sect of people you may not know may not be as effective. Me as a black man, if I had to write an ad for, let's say a Chinese team, you know, or for like an Italian market, I don't live that culture. I don't know that culture. I don't think I would be effective. Not saying that people can't write for other cultures. I'm just saying, but if you're in the culture, it's more genuine to you and more authentic to you. So just helping to have in, uh, add creative spaces, you know, being more diverse and, um, and being more inclusive. And then for 2021, I just hope that we, that this wave does not die down, that we continue on this wave. I think we're having a good momentum right now, especially since the George Floyd incident. You know, I think the whole world got to see our problems magnified on camera and saw just how brutal and difficult life is for Black Americans and how unfair it is for Black Americans. And I think his death, I mean, he was, he's like a martyr now. You know, it was a very unfortunate situation that he had to pass in the, in the way that he passed. But I think it's shedding light and bringing more light to our struggles as people. And now I hope that this wave, as I mentioned, continues well into 2021 and beyond so that we can continue to be great and do more great things and be in places where we haven't been before. You know, so that, and again, people like us producers, it's, it's on us to bring our other people who look like us into this business, into this world. So I hope that wave continues well beyond 2021. You answered my next question, so I don't even need to ask it. Great job, that's an amazing answer. Thank you, thank you. Layla, you can go ahead and take it. <laughs> Let's talk COVID for a second. How yeah. will COVID change the office dynamics in the future? Will we need more remote work? Will offices remain the same? Will there be a different set of guidelines? Yes, and I do believe that the COVID world has now changed our working environment forever. Those of us who are fortunate enough to have a job where we can work from home, uh, we have proven that over the past three plus months that we can still be productive and do things and be great and meet deadlines and meet goals without all needing to be in the same physical space. That we can work from Zoom, from Teams, from um, other kinds of platforms, that we still can get work done and be productive. So I think that it's just proven that the working office environment is not as efficient as it may have been 20, 30 years ago. That with technology, with cell phones, with Zoom, with computers, that and, and, and Wi-Fi, thankfully, you know, we can do things that our parents may not have been able to do. And to, we're just proven that being in the office together is not necessarily something that we need to do. It's nice to be all together for efficiency sometimes, but it's not necessary. Thank you. Great. Um, now let's switch it and make it a little bit more personal. What are your personal goals and any projects that you're working on right now that you want to do a shout out to? Tell us about. Let us know. Uh, yeah, I'd say for me, personal goals. Ultimately, I want to have my own production company, and I'm in the budding stage of that. Um, as you mentioned, my name is Rondell Westcott. So my company would be Delcott, using the last part of Dell and the last part of Westcott. 
So Delcott Productions. And I've had that and known that since I was a kid. I, I even have a logo drawn out. I knew since I was about 10 or 12 that I wanted to be in production and knew I wanted my company. And since I was about 12, I knew that Delcott Productions would be a thing. And I'm working now with friends to do small productions. I produced a music video, uh, which was kind of on my own, under my own production company. So I'm trying to do things and grow that a little bit more and um, have that be my sole source of income, ultimately, that I can do projects and do great things that cater to our people. Because I do believe that I want to always be true to my people, to my culture. And uh, my goal would be to produce content that speaks to us and that is true to us and authentic to us. And that's uh, what I want it to be ultimately. It's really funny because Layla and I both have similar stories. We both also wanted to be in production, having our own company when we were kids. So that yeah. is, that's, that's very, you know, same page here. So yeah. we are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a great thing to be doing it now and being able to do what you love and, and be paid for it. I mean, that's a great yeah. feeling. Yes, agree. Any final thoughts or advice you'd like to give our viewers now? I'd just say for a final thought for everyone taking a look and watching is just to keep, be strong. I mean, right now, these times have been difficult. It's been hard. I mean, I literally have shed tears over the whole George Floyd thing. And just watching our people just come under such distress, you know, even from all the riots that happened and, and the lootings and just seeing all the stuff that has happened. And even like that same week, watching uh, Omar Jimenez from CNN be arrested right on TV, you know, as a black man and just seeing all that's happening to us. I mean, it's, it's hard to see and hard to watch. And then still for me, for us, black people, it's even harder to do that and then come to work when you're surrounded by majority white coworkers and they pretend to ignore and not even acknowledge the tragedies going on in the world. Like the morning after, the Monday morning after the George Floyd uh, murder, you know, I was on a 9.30 a.m. conference call that morning and it was business as usual. And they were just talking about, you know, things and work and delivery deadlines. And I'm like, yo, and you know, and I'm like, and again, my mind was so distraught and I was stressed and sad and angry. And, and here I go in the 9.30 call and they're like, oh guys, so we have a deadline 10 a.m. tomorrow, we need to get this done. Just kind of totally ignoring what's going on. So just I'm telling our people just to be strong, you know, it, you know, cause I think we are creating change. You know, change is happening even here in New York this week. Governor Cuomo signed some new police reform bills, you know, to ban chokeholds, which is how and why Eric Garner had died. Um, but just being strong and just staying passionate and being, um, just staying strong, I'll say, is my main message because we need the strength. Like, it's, it's, it's been some hard times. And even putting COVID on top of all that, people have had relatives, family members, friends who have passed away from COVID. You know, we're at 110,000 plus deaths right now. So we all have been touched, whether it have been directly or indirectly. We all know somebody who was a friend of a friend or a family of a family who has been directly affected. And it's been tough. And you're being at home and quarantine for all this time. You can't go out. You can't see anybody. You can't touch anybody. You know, like it's rough. So just being strong through all these times, all these instances, all that's going on in the world, you know, just staying strong through it all and just being true to ourselves and to our people. Because I think right now, this is a time where we are beginning to shine and get more attention and our issues and our, uh, our culture is getting more attention. So I think we can take advantage of that and then do all we can to continue to show up, you know, be strong, be confident in all that we do and let people see what they haven't seen before, that we're capable, we're capable, we're competent, we're confident, we can do what our other counterparts can do if you give us a chance and know who we are. So that's how I would end giving a message to all the viewers. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so much for your time. Have a great day. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.